Hello, good day to you. We will start the SIGTRAM M3UA technical training right now. So I will start with the, describing SIGTRAM in a, as an overview, but more specifically in this presentation, M3UA, and then signaling gateway configuration uh, and the uh, status and troubleshooting of the system. So in general, SIGTRAM is used to replace uh, or relay the TDM protocol. So it's a method of forwarding uh, the older TDM type signaling to the newer IP type signaling. Okay, and they uh, englobe that into a protocol that's called SIGTRAN, which actually multiple protocols. So here I listed some of them, which we already gave some training on, and 2 pa here that replaces the TDM layer two, and the M2 UA that relays the TDM layer two. Okay, so uh, it takes the TDM layer two data, sends that over IP using M2 UA. And then you can use M3 UA, which is one level above M2 UA and M2 PA, and it replaces here the layers two and layers three of the TDM side, or it relays the TDM layer three, which is MTP. There's also other protocols here, V5 UA, that relays V5.2, used in uh, Europe and other places, and then IUA, which relays TDM, ISDM, primary rate. If you look at the SS7 architecture using SIGTRAM, what you have here is a traditional SS7 uh, endpoints or nodes or SSPs. Uh, here you have your traditional MTP2 A links. And what you want to do is uh, move on to an IP network. Right? So uh, how you do that is you, do, you use a SIGTRAN gateway. When you use a SIGTRAN gateway, then you go on uh, M3 away, for example. I'm, I'm giving this as an example because it's this training but it could be other uh, SIGTRAN protocols. And this goes over IP as CTP to a main, uh, well, usually these are private clouds, but here I showed just one global cloud for a SIGTRAN traffic. And then these can go to other SSPs. If you go this way, it goes to other SSPs, or it can go uh, to SCPs, which are traditional uh, uh, control points here that have database access uh, for LNP and, and number portabilities and uh, 800 numbers and stuff like that. And you see here the SCCP can run over M3 UA if it's SIGTRAN enabled, or it runs over traditional protocols here with another SIGTRAN gateway that you put here so that it can interface with the new uh, SIGTRAN network here. What you have to understand is that the circuit and voice uh, are still in uh, TDM traffic. Right, so it's only the signaling here that goes over IP network. The real voice still goes through TDM. And then you can have a SIGTRAN enabled gateway. So instead of having a SIGTRAN gateway here, you can connect directly to the SIGTRAN network from these systems. But you have to understand that the TDM lines Querying the voice is still on E1, T1. Okay, so here your eyes up is directly connected to the M3 UA layer instead of being, as I shown before, on the uh, older TDM networks, MTP3 and MTP2. Okay. Then the rest here is M3 UA. It's, a, it's just an example. Okay, so if I look at the uh, different layers you have, M3UA is here right in the middle. Here you have to define some point codes because at the MTP3, M3UA level, you need to have uh, point codes. This identifies each element in a uh, SS7 network. And then you have routes that, can, that allows packets to flow from one uh, source to another uh, destination. So here, if I show you the uh, ASP mode, which is application server process. Here, what you do is you will get packets over the IP network. Okay? Your SS7 signal links will be over your IP links here, received at the M3UA level. 
And then the M3 away here, since it has the point codes, uh, when it receives the packets, it knows that it uh, is destined to us, right? So you have point codes here for the ISOP and point codes here for the uh, SCCP and TCAMP. And if it's destined towards us, then we will keep those packets and control the voice circuits, as you saw before, were E1, T1. If they come in here over uh, SCCP, so these are different type of signaling messages. If we receive SCCP, TCAP, then we can add additional application. These are always data over SS7, it's not voice. And uh, it's either here SMS, you know, signaling uh, short message service here, or other types of applications that you have over an SS7 network. Here I showed the signaling gateway mode. So you still see your M3 UA level here, but it's configured differently, meaning that you will attach it to the MTP3 network. So you can still receive your MT, M3 UA packets coming from the IP network on this side. And if we configure that signaling gateway, it's going to find an MTP3 network into the system. And if, it's, if the point code is owned by the MTP3, it's going to send that here. And then MTP3, of course, knows how to send that over the TDM, the traditional TDM links, either 64 kilobit per second or high speed links. And of course, the packets can flow the other way. So again, you receive the packets here on MTP3. If MTP3 finds that this is a point code owned by the Sectron network, it will forward that out to the IP. Uh, if you if you look here, you see only a layer three messages, okay. But in fact, what you transport is the higher layer ISOP and SCCP messages over the network. Uh, M3UA can be used to relay this ISOP SCCP data. We saw that as a signaling gateway. It can terminate the ISOP, and we saw that as well as ASP mode. Okay, and this usually is done by either a soft switch, a gateway, uh, a media gateway controller, uh, all of these types of device here. And then you can also relay ISOP SCCP data, but to another signaling gateway. Okay, so instead of just relaying that on the network, it's relayed to another uh, signaling gateway. And then this is a special mode, which internally we call signaling gateway to signaling gateway mode. And uh, you do that to connect to an existing uh, ISTP or SGP network. Here I showed the M3-way bring up sequence. So how does it start? Uh, you have here the ASP, M3UA ASP side, and you have here the M3UA signaling gateway side. These go to the upper layer SS7 stacks, and these go to the traditional uh, MTP3 and MTP2 uh, layers here, which uh, then have, there is also SS7 stack on that side. Uh, but here I show just the signaling gateway part. All right, so you have in it, messages that are being sent. This is at the SCTP level. So everything on M3UA runs on SCTP. Uh, and then you send uh, a window size. So this is a, a buffer that you have to receive packets. And the number of SCTP streams is you have uh, uh, priority streams in, uh, in a connection, SCTP connection end to end. So you say how many you want and the type of uh, streams you want to control here. So. It can be as low as two streams, but often we see four or 10 streams being negotiated here. So that's effectively negotiation at this level and just a verification here. Then once you have your SCTP link up, it will try to bring up the M3 away link. So here you have an ASP up message sent from the ASP side. And if it's if the signal is ready, it's gonna acknowledge that. And it's gonna say here on this side, well, uh, my my side of the application server is not active, and uh, an additional information here that you need when you work with M three ways a routing context that identifies the upper layers upper layer applications that are being run here at the SS seven level. Okay, so it's just a, a value that you uh, use, and it needs to match 
uh, end to end. So here, when you send the ASP active mode, you will send here the same routing configs. And uh, an additional information you will send is uh, the traffic mode. So if you have multiple paths uh, from uh, the ASP to the signaling gateway side, it will describe how you transmit the packets. So is it in override or active standby mode? Or is it in load share so you can send packets on the two uh, peer servers uh, connected? Okay. Uh, of course, the other side needs to be configured the same way with the same routing context to accept it. And once it's accepted, you will get a notify saying that uh, everything is ready to go. Right. So once you have that, then you can start sending higher layer uh, packets. There's uh, just like in other protocols, there's other messages that you see sometimes. Uh, so most of them are not so important, but I think the ones here called uh, uh, Dava and Duna and Dada are, are important. So Dava is destination available. Uh, Duna is destination unavailable. And then the AUD is destination audit. Okay, so what happens is if a point code becomes unavailable in a network, it will send, well, don't try to access this point code. And for each of these messages, there will always be a point code specified there to say. So if a complete link goes down, then you, you may get multiple Duna messages being sent to uh, another uh, element in the system. And uh, then you will maybe get later uh, Dava's mail to, to explain that we bring up those links again and they're available now uh, and then you have a destination audit so you can query a system and that's useful when you start up the system you query is that uh, destination available now and then there's going to be a duna or a dava being sent to uh, say it's available or not So if you look at what we support on the TechObridges side, so we have uh, different types of devices, uh, TMG 800, which can have up to uh, 16 E1s, uh, and also the TSG 800 here. These ones can have up to 64 E1 key ones. But each of these devices support all in three-way modes, either ASP, SG. Uh, I mentioned SG, SG mode here, and there's another mode that's a direct connection we seldom use that in our configuration but it's called ip sp here and you can have up to 64 m 3 ua associations or links or destinations right so you can connect to multiple different uh, asps or or signaling gateways in the system uh, this is a, a sample m 3 ua uh, sg configuration so SG is signaling gateway here. So you have your signaling gateway here that stands in the middle. On the uh, traditional SS7 side, the TDM, you have your SS7 MTP2 links here. You will have your upper layers here, MTP3, eyes up on this side. These are traditional switches in general. Uh, and it will have a point code here. Okay, And I call it here a destination point code. Because viewed from the signaling gateway, this will be a destination. On the signaling gateway itself, what you have is your either T1 or E1 time slots where you can carry your MTP2 links here. They will be regrouped using MTP3. And then on the M3 USA, M3 UI side, you will have a network interface here, one or many network interface, IP and a SCTP port on this side. So you will have maybe one or multiple IP, one or multiple uh, ports. This, of course, is to uh, allow M3UA to connect to SCTP and this M3UA network, and there will be exchange of messages here between the two protocols. Here, what you configure uh, on this side is a point code as well, but we call it here uh, originating point code because it is shared with the m 3 way ASP. So you see here also, you have a point code on the ASP side and we call it uh, originating point code here because uh, viewed from this side, this, is, this will be the OPC and this will be the DPC on this side, okay? So 
when you gather information about the system, you will need the point code of this system, the point code of this, this system, and you can configure on this side the OPC of the ASP and the DPC of the SSP. Okay. Like this. Um, on the here you have your SIGTRAN link. So these are IP links. Of course, it can be any any type of network, usually Ethernet here. Uh, like I said, they're usually private links, so they, they would be over VPN connections or NPLS uh, links, uh, things like that. Uh, on this side, you have a, a remote IP and port, so remote viewed from the signaling gateway, so how to reach this M3UA ASP. Um, so here I show only one, but you can have multiple IP ports here or multiple peers so for one peer you can have more than one ip or you can have multiple peers to the same endpoint or multiple peers to other endpoints so you can create multiple connections from the same source here or you can also have another source and connect from the other source to the destination All right so it's very configuration is very flexible on this side same thing on this side right just you can have multiple connection to uh, SSPs that would be here in the network with different E1, T1s here. So T1s, different T1s, and different signaling links going to each one of them. They all can be aggregated to go to a ASP. So configuration step, you need to have your uh, TDM T1, E1. You saw that because you need to connect to the traditional network. You need to have your uh, MTP2 configuration. So these are your time slots, signaling links, A links. Okay. You have your point codes here. You need to define at least two point codes, one going towards TDM, which we call the DPC, and one going to M3 away, which we call OPC. Uh, you need to have the MTP3 configuration set with the routes, routes going to TDM, routes going to M3 UA, and you need to have your M3 UA configuration which I will go through in this presentation. So at the minimum, you need to have your point code configuration. You require a point code for the SS7 switch sign, so the traditional TDM, and we call it a DPC. Okay, so you need to have a DPC here in the configuration. And then you need to have another point code for the signaling gateway side, which we call an OPC. Okay. You can configure multiple DPCs, multiple OPCs, depending on your uh, setup here. Uh, PC mask is not necessary for the signaling gateway configuration, but can be used in other types of configuration like SG, SG mode. So here, when you want to configure signaling gateway, uh, you need to use SGP node types or signaling gateway process SGP, uh, in the M3 way configuration. And you see here, you have the other modes that can be selected. ASP, I will show some of it in the present and uh, demonstration. IPSP, we don't use this uh, normally. And then signaling gateway to signaling gateway, special mode for connecting to uh, other signaling gateways. M3 way uh, service access point. So this is your local interface. How do you receive and send traffic out to the M3 way network? Here you have your local IP interface, which is defined here. So this is just a one of the port uh, here is untagged. Uh, and then you need to have your SCTP port. The default port for M3UA is 2905. So if you're not sure, use this one, but it, it, you can use any type of uh, any SCTP port here in the configuration. This will be your from which SCTP port you will send traffic or you will receive traffic. Uh, in the network side, well, there's not much configuration you need to do, just what type of protocol. So we support NC or ITU uh, in the configuration. NC for North America, ITU for Europe. Here, I think the example I chose was ITU here. In the M3UA, the next thing you need to configure is the PSP, so peer signaling process here. And this mostly defines what is the remote signaling gateway or ASP or SGSG you are connecting to. 
Okay, so in this case, you see it is a application server process, ASP mode. This is the local interface we configured just before. And this is the remote information. Okay, so what is the IP of the remote? What is the port of the remote? Here, I chose the same port in and out, but it could be different ports. If I show you uh, the PSP configuration, it looks like this. So you need to specify what is the remote PSP side. Uh, here in our case, it's an ASP because we're configuring the signaling gateway now, but it could be other types of remote. Uh, the destination port, I told you it's uh, 2905. Here I chose a default number of SCTP streams to five. You can see here the remote IP. I chose, this is for my lab setup, but of course you can have multiple IP, so you just need to enter a new IP here, press the arrows, and you will have now two IP to reach your destination. So it's the same SCTP association with two IPs inside. You can also create two different SCTP associations. Two different, in our case, two different uh, PSPs. Then you need a peer server, PSRV. Uh, this will define how to reach a destination. Okay, So you could have multiple PSPs inside a peer server. Uh, in this case, uh, you need to specify the routing context for that peer server, what we will use in that communication. What is the traffic mode type? So active standby or called also override and then load sharing. So that only applies if you have more than one PSP here configured, more than one path to reach your destination. Um, yeah, so routing context is used when you want to connect from a signaling gateway to an ASP, uh, but it may not always be necessary. Okay, so in other NGA modes, you can put a, a RC of zero, it's not even used in the messages. The last part of the M3-way M3 M3 configuration is the routes. So you need to say packets coming from TDM, how do they go to the SIGTRAN, and how they are received and sent back to TDM. So first route is towards the TDM side. So then you need to specify the route type as NTP3. You need to have your user part, which we defined just uh, before and your uh, point code. So that's what I say, it's a T DPC, destination point code towards the TDM side. So that's the old SS7 switch that is there. Uh, the subservice field here, normally you put none because you don't want to uh, restrict traffic, but you have two options, either ISOP or SCCP, if you know it's gonna be only this type of traffic. If you don't know, then you need to put none. The other route is the route towards M3 way. So then uh, the route type now here needs to be peer server. So that's a, a M3 way connection. Uh, which peer server you want to use? This peer server is is a one uh, route, but you can have multiple uh, paths to for that route. Uh, what you have to be careful here is the user part needs to be none. And this can be confusing because I, I think you still have the option when you press the down arrow. Here it appears M3 US bar, but you need not to use that because it's going out to the network and not to our uh, user part. Uh, then you need here, and it may be counter in, counterintuitive slightly, is you need to uh, provide the point code of the M3 UA side, and it's an OPC viewed from the this network. Okay, so it needs to define define it, uh, an OPC, but it's actually a shared point code between the ASP and our system here. And then it's the same same description here on this side. Okay. So uh, once you do that, once you have done that, you have configured your system. Then you can go in, uh, uh, so you, I forgot to say here, you need to activate the configuration. Once you activate the configuration, activate is in the system here. So you click on system and select activate. I'll show you that in the, in the uh, demonstration. Um, you can click here on status, and then you can see the state of your PSPs, PSR, P servers here, and your routes. 
Okay, so if you just click on the Sigtran M3UA, here it will show as green or red, depending if it's up or down. And you will see your peer uh, PSPs here, and you will see if they are active. Okay, ASP active here. Uh, then you have your uh, P peer servers, peer servers here. The PSP is this here, it's the same thing. Okay, it's linked here. Uh, this actually, this part here is the SAP. You see here, that's your local interface. This is the peer server to reach a destination. And then your routes here are using this peer server that was configured here towards for your route towards the TDM side and your route towards the ASP side. So if this is not up, then everything else is down and it's the same. If this one is down, this one will be down everything will be down. So you need to go from top down, check if this one here is ready first, and then if this one is okay, is this one okay? If it's okay, then you go to the next part. Okay. Here you have your uh, PSP state. Okay. Uh, in here, you see if it is active, if the association so that's the SCPP association is active and if the ASP state is active so you will see this information here the desired ASP state by normally is is set to default so that means uh, everything will be handled by the uh, standard uh, what, what the system sees from the network so if everything is okay it will bring up the link but here um you can also change this okay and force another mode again this is for testing or management okay so you can there, there's multiple options when you open the, the default uh, link here on the asp state but there's only uh, a few of them that i would really use one is shut down okay so this is the one here so this completely shuts down the link so this is just like you have stopped uh, the uh, SCTP link. And then you have ASP down here. It sends an ASP down message on the network to the other side. And then you, you will see that the ASP uh, state will, go, will come down. Uh, once you finish testing, you should put it back to default here and normally the ASP will come back up normally. Troubleshooting tools for M3 UA, you can look, of course, in the status, but uh, once you look at the status and you see that it's uh, not available, you can look at the configuration, make sure this is okay, compare with the other side, what is, uh, what is the configuration on the other side, the IPs, the networks, uh, you can look if you're pinging the remote system. Once you have all of that settled, then you can take a signaling trace. Okay, so you will uh, start this uh, application on the system called TBC Trace. This will create two Wireshark captures, one for TDM traffic and one for IP traffic. Um, if you can't, well, once you have the trace, then you can start looking and see what is going on. So it could be the routing context that is invalid. It could be the the port, the IP uh, that is not uh, settled. It could be the, the VPN tunnel that is down. So that means your packet is not reaching the other side or you're not receiving the responses. Uh, you need to check also the traffic mode type, make sure it's uh, applicable. If you can't uh, go and debug, you can do a TB report. This will give you all the logs of the system and what is going on. And I'll show you examples of this uh, in my demonstration. Um, the lab setup I will show you now is configured this way. I have one M2P and TP2 and one M2PA link on the TBM side. Both of them are groomed inside one MTP3 link set uh, to the SS7 uh, side. It has one point code and one MTP3 routes toward a TDM, one MTP3 route towards the M3 way. 
I have here TDM line interfaces. One uh, I'm using for sync links, or my MTP2 link is on a D1 link here, one time sort of a D1 link to send the data. And I'm using T1 for the voice traffic. Okay, so it's uh, it's an uh, improbable uh, real-life scenario, but it's uh, totally configurable on our systems. And then I configured one M3UA signaling gateway and one M3UA ASP. So if we look at the signaling gateway part, so this is like the middle of the configuration. This is what I have. I have uh, my device here, the PSG 800. I have one MTP2 link over the E1 uh, line here on the one time slot. I have one M2PA link here that is an IP connection towards my uh, SF7 SSP. I have my MTP3 that regroups these two links uh, together. I have here in my MTP3 configuration one DPC as 701 and one OPC as 702. And here I explained one link set with the two links here. The IP I have on this side is 60, and the port I'm using for M2PA is 3565. Uh, on the M3UA signaling gateway side, so you of course need to use the SG mode, attach it to an SCTP uh, protocol here. Uh, here as well, I have my DPC as 701, so you can see it's the same configuration as MTP3. And here I have a shared point code as 702, which is also an OPC viewed from this side. I am using routing context 70 in this configuration. I have only one M3 weight. Uh, there on this side, I'm using the same port. You see, I'm using the same port as this side, but here I'm running M3 UA also on this same port uh, using 2905 as a SCTP port. This is the M3UA network, and this is the M3UA ASP. So I will show you uh, both sides of the configuration now. If I look at the ASP side, what I have is my M3UA network coming in from my signaling gateway, which I just explained. This is coming in here uh, over SCTP on this port, 2905 as well, and the port uh, IP 162. My M3UA here is configured in ASP mode, and I have a point code 702, my local point code here, and I'm using their same routing context as a signaling gateway. And uh, to do the demonstration, I uh, configured also eyes up here uh, with one circuit group uh, CIC value from 25 to 38. So that's one T1. And the T1s are here, so I configured one T1, and these circuits are re are uh, identify physical time slots on my T1 here. The, if I look on the TDM side, uh, then I have, uh, if I start here, I have my MTP2 link, which is carried over an E1 to the signaling gateway. I have my M2PA, which is uh, on the, the IP network, a local IP network I have here. My IP is 181 and the port is 3565 is on this side. I have my, this is an OPC, right? Originating point code, 701. I have one link set, which englobes both links here. And I have my eyes up, and you see I have the same circuits as I have on the ASP side here. If I look down here, my circuits are attached to the same T1 that is configured on the ASP side. This is where my voice is carried. Okay, so I will show you the lab configuration. Okay, so this is a connection to the uh, web interface for configuring the system. Um, if I start here, uh, you will need to have for M3 away, you will need to have your SCTP. Uh, it's very simple here. You just need to enable it. It's always raw IP and you can give it a link here. Not, not a big deal. You can configure your point codes here. So here you see you have your TDM side, which is 701, and the uh, M3 away side, which is 702. So I showed you that in the previous uh, 
uh, presentation to show you how it works exactly. So viewed from the signaling gateway, and this here I show you the signaling gateway. It's DPC, Toro CDM, M3 UA, OPC. Okay, of course, I have the MTP3 configured here, but I showed that in another uh, presentation, so I won't show it here. Uh, here, the M3 UA, what I need is to make sure that I'm using the signaling gateway process for this configuration. I need to have my uh, service access point, so that's my local interface here. So my local interface using this port, and here I have a, a VoIP bonded port, and maybe I can show you what this looks like on the IP interface side. So you have here VoIP bonded, it's uh, this IP, uh, and uh, VoIP bonded means also it's using uh, VoIP 0 and VoIP 1 untagged, they could have been tagged like this one here. Uh, so they are grouped together, and uh, it's this IP here that is configured. Okay, I could have multiple local interfaces, but let's say this is more rare. We usually use uh, just a bonded interface here. Okay, if I go back, so I have my M3 configuration, and I have just one network. There's no other configuration. Everything else is the, in the network. Uh, you would have multiple networks if you have different protocol types. Here. Okay, so you could have one network ITU, one network NC, and, and other modes here uh, for Japan and China. Um, subservice field, and of course, if you have other subservice field, you will need another network here. DPC LAN, LAN sorry, is uh, 14 bits for ITU and 24 bits for uh, ANC in China. User part, it's just a straight connection towards the MTP3 network. So of course you need to have your MTP3 network configured before you can configure your M3 UA. So you bound it to the MTP3 side, TDM side. Um, here you have your uh, PSP, piercing link process. Okay, and here you need to say towards which uh, type of remote that you're connecting, uh, which local interface you're using, the destination SCTP port and the destination IP address. If you just look at this PSP here, you have the choice of different types of destination, the destination port, which could be different than the originating port. And here you have your uh, SAP, so that's your service access point that we configured just before. And your destination IPs, like I said, you can add here additional IPs in the system. Here you have your peer servers. In the case of a signaling gateway, you need only one peer server. Okay? In other modes, you may require more peer servers, okay? but each type of configuration is done slightly differently, so you need to make sure you're using the right uh, mode for this. Uh, in the case of a signaling gateway, like I said, you need only one. You need to configure your routing context. You need to specify your traffic mode type, even if you have only one PSP here. And then if you have other PSPs, they will show up here and you can add them. These are different paths to reach your destination. So you have here your peer server. And then you have your routes here. You need to configure a route towards your TDM side. So this will be, and I will show that, this will be MTP3, okay? So you will connect the data coming into the network towards MTP3. Uh, the M3UA user part, there's only one, so you can keep that. And then your uh, MTP3 side will be the TDM side, so that will use the DPC TDM. Subservice field, like I said, you can uh, optimize it to say only ISAP messages, only SCP message, or all messages. And point code max, you you that's if you have only one point code. If you have other other point codes, you can define different routes or use other modes here. If you're using the uh, SG mode, you also need to specify at least one ASP here. 
So a route towards the SSP will specify which peer server that you want to use. Uh, you need to specify the, the peer server okay, that you configured. And here, what you have to be careful is you keep none. You should not use the uh, M3 or UAP in the mode of your going to ASP. So sometimes it's, con it's confusing. You will choose this by default. The point code here is the point code towards M3 UA. It's a shared point code. So it's the same point code you have on the single link gateway and on the M3 UA ASP. These are the same. Okay, so this is the M3 UA configuration. That's all you need to do. Uh, if I go here, so if I go back, you will see you have your network information. This is not so important. Your P PSP, one or many, peer servers, one or many, and then routes. You will need to assemble these peer servers or these PSPs into the peer server. All right, so this is your configuration. Once you've done that, you need to go here and activate the configuration for your three-way training. Then you will see if the links are configured correctly or not by going into global status. And you have the M3 UA tab here. So you see all your information here. For each one of them, there is a different status you can get. All right, so for the SAP, not much information here. So you have the local, is it available or not? And then you can shut it down if you want. I didn't show this in the presentation, but you can, you can just shut it down here instead of uh, the uh, other layer. But normally, uh, this is where you, we would want to control SAP. It's at this level. So this uh, PSP says we're using this local interface. Uh, now it is active. The SCTP is active and the ASP is active. Uh, and then you can change this uh, behavior to shut down the link. You can just do here, shut down. Be careful when you do apply states, it will apply it immediately. Okay. So you see it will send a uh, shutdown on the link and bring down. So now you have no more M3 way configuration on the system. So if you want to bring it back up, you need to make sure it's default here and it will bring back up the link. Um, the routes, not much information in the routes. So normally we don't need to use this, but you will see if it's available or not. Okay. So the other thing I want to show is the ASP side. So on the ASP side, just bring it up a bit bigger. So on the ASP side, you just need to make sure that your uh, mode is ASP. Okay. The same thing you have to do here on the SAP. Define a a, a a local interface. Then you need to here uh, specify the remote, and that's what we change here. Is the remote now is uh, not ASP, it's SG now. So your ASP, you're sending to the SG and you need to make sure it's the correct IP. Here on the ASP side, I said there's two, you need to have now two peer servers. One, it's as a local peer server because you need to be able to receive and terminate this, uh, these M3-way messages. Okay, and the remote will be the same as in the other configuration. And here, when you configure at the ASP side, it's just a slightly, Slight different is your local route here will be um, will need to use here the M3 way UP because you are receiving this these packets. Okay, so these are the only differences you have in the two modes, uh, ASP and uh, signaling gateway. Okay, so now let me show you how to uh, what you can get from the system. So if I go here. I can do my signaling trace to capture my packets. And you see when I do, let me just do it again. You type TB sig trace, okay? TB signaling trace. When you type TB sig trace without any other parameters, uh, it will try to capture everything. But of course, you have. Uh, other options you can have to say, I want to capture only SS7, only 
that he has. Like, I, but let's say the default mode to keep it simple is just you just type db6 trace, and it will uh, create two uh, two files. One is for IP, so that will be your M3 UA uh, packets that will be here, and one will be for uh, SS7. Here I have only uh, one. SS7 link, so you will see it. Uh, or actually, only one SS7 MTP2 link. The other one is an M2PA link, which will show in this trace instead. Okay, and you will see here your packets. Then, what I can do is I can uh, generate a call. So, I can place a call in the system, and you'll see there will be some uh, packets being sent. And the other thing I can do is do a shutdown here of the SAP, and you will see what happens if I do get go to the PSP, not to the SAP. PSP is the one I want to do. Okay, so I want to go here to shut down, and you will see the link that is shut down, and then I want to bring it back up. Oh, it's back to default, so that's fine. Like this. Okay, then I go back to my trace here. You see there's a lot of packets that are being transmitted. I want to quit the application. Then I want to get the file. The file will be in a specific directory. Oops, not this one. I will be in a specific directory, so it will be uh, in this case, this one, and TB6 trace. Okay, so my latest files are these two. Okay, yeah, so I stop my trace. Okay, so then if I go in my files, I will have my, let's look at the SS7 trace first. Oops, I want it to be here. So you will see here there's some uh, SS7 messages that are being sent that are being sent on the TDM network like this. Okay. And if I go to the M3 UA side, I will see the same packets. So of course when you go on the M3 UA side, you have all these SCTP RD. So you can remove that by just saying no heartbeat. Here in my case, I also have SIP traffic, which is not what I want to show here. So I, wa I will go straight to the SCTP or M3 UA connection. Okay, so when I look at my M3 UA, I saw the uh, a call that I made on the system. So if you look into the trace here, you will see the packet came from uh, 701 to uh, 702, but this is only at the, uh, where is it here, in the uh, M3 way part of the configuration. Okay, so you see the lower layers here are SCTP, Stream Control Transmission Protocol, so 2905 being used as source and destination, and you have here your uh, IP ports, 160, 162, this is what I showed you uh, in the presentation. At the M3UA level, you see you have your information here. The imported information in this packet is the routing context. I mentioned that. Uh, you have also the uh, OPC, DPC that is shown here, what type of network it is. This configuration we do in the M3UA configuration. And then you have your upper layer information, which is your eyes up traffic. So here using CIC25 and uh, what is the call party. Uh, calling party information. Oops, calling party is here. So you have this information being sent. And here the call was refused. Okay, so it's a uh, what type of error? Call rejected. Okay, so the call was rejected. So you see the packets flow in and out of the system. The second part here is when I brought down the link. Okay, so and here maybe I can show the SCTP traffic because we, we can see that the link came down here. 
or just before I should say. Just go back a little bit. Shut down. All right. So this is when we did the shutdown. So you see it's the shutdown is a is a SCTP command here that is being sent. And the other side can only say acknowledge and then complete. Then even if it tries to bring back the link, it will abort because we we're set to shut down. And then at some point we changed it from shutdown to a default. So then when it tried to initialize the link, then it came up and you see in the init chunks, you have the number of streams, the window size, which is here and the cookie exception, uh, acceptance. You have here your ASP up command and there's not much information here apart just why I want to bring up the ASP. ASP up acknowledged, not much information. Then you have the notify. And the notify is, well, I have a configured ASP on my side, which is now inactive and it's using rotting context seven. And the other side will then at some point say, well, I want to activate this, uh, this ASP. And then you have routing context 70, and this is the mode I want to use, override or active standby. Since I have only one BSP, then it's not, not very important. And you have ASP acknowledge, so it accepts that. And you have a notify from the other side to say that ASP is active. Okay, so the last thing I want to show you are these uh, links to documentation. So I brought them up in this page here. So I have the M3UA page. So this gives you a global overview of M3UA. And then you have two important links here, Sigtran use cases and M3UA configuration and the configuration of M3UA. So the direct configuration. These are mostly use cases. So the use cases are here. So you have M3UA use cases and you have multiple configurations you have here. You have global Sigtran configuration, which is not only M3UA, but other modes, M2UA, M2UA, M3UA, and M2PA, other modes here. This is the configuration that you uh, have for M3UA. So you need to go here on Sigtran, and then you have other modes like M2UA, and then you need to go here to M3UA, and you have all the M3UA configuration, well, configuration here. That explains just what are the steps. What you need to uh, do here is what, before you get to this page, make sure you're using the correct uh, mode here. Okay, so M3OA ASP with shared point code. So if you want to go here, then you should go here and it will explain what configuration you need to do for more specifically for each type of um, configuration. Right. So if you get to this page here, you, you may not know what to put as a PSP, what IPs to put, what ports. Okay. So it's probably better to go to the use cases here. Um, troubleshooting, I showed you uh, the signaling trace, but there's other troubleshooting tools you can have here. And for support, that's cutting, contacting our team for support, helping you uh, troubleshoot your system. This concludes my uh, M3A presentation. I hope you enjoyed this and uh, I will sign up. Oh, thank you very much.